Like Fusion 360, FreeCAD is a powerful parametric 3D CAD suite. But unlike Fusion 360, FreeCAD is free and open source. This means that you'll never have to worry about vendor licensing changing and limiting your access to your tools or your projects. This video is a very quick introduction to FreeCAD for people who are already familiar with Fusion 360 or another similar 3D CAD suite with the aim of getting you creating as quickly as possible. This is a fresh install of FreeCAD 0.19 pre-release edition, which I've linked to in the video description. I'll be using 0.19 in this and future videos instead of the current 0.18 release version. The first thing I like to do is change the color scheme, change the gradient background and enable anti-aliasing. I'll also move these toolbars up here as this row will get pretty crowded here when we start working. We can now close the start page and create a new project. This drop down menu at the top lets us choose from our installed workbenches. For this video, I'll be using the part design workbench and the sketcher workbench as these are the most similar to the design workspace in Fusion 360 Right now, I'll just start with the part design workbench. You can see that this row now has a whole bunch more tools. Anything in this section here in yellow is additive tools. Anything in this section is your subtractive tools. But all the way over here to the left is what we want to start with, which is to create a new body tool. This window on the left is our combo window. There's various different variations of this that you can set up and customize yourself, but right now we'll just leave it at default. In the model tab is our document tree, similar to what you would see over on the left hand side of Fusion. We can see the new body that was just created is in this tree. Now I can click here to create a new sketch. Select the plane I want to sketch on. We'll just use the XY plane and then click OK. Now I can see that the Sketcher workbench is selected and I've got a whole bunch of new tools available to me. These tools in this toolbar are the construction tools and these are the constraint tools. But for the most part, you can just pick a shape and start drawing. You'll also notice that by default, there is no grid and grid snapping is turned off. They're easy to turn on and off but you'll find that grid snapping is not something that you'll use very often in FreeCAD. To get started, I'm just going to draw a simple rectangle starting in the center point. You'll also notice that there was no option for me to set dimensions as I was creating the shape. It's very easy to just do that by adding some length constraints. When we're done drawing the sketch, we can just click the close button in the task menu and we can see that that sketch is now visible in the tree. We can edit that sketch at any time again by double clicking on it. Any changes that we make will update through the rest of the model. Now that the sketch is done, we've returned back to the part design workbench and I can select the sketch and pick from any of the additive tools to create a, a body. The FreeCAD equivalent of extrude is pad There's also Revolve, Loft, Sweep, and Create a Primitive. And they all work basically the same as their Fusion counterparts. And if I go back to just using a basic pad, you can see that the sketch that was used to create it has actually become a child of the pad. We can still go back and edit that at any time this tree isn't just a list of all of the items included in your project, it's also the design history, similar to what you would have along the bottom of the window in Fusion 360. Now that we have a body, I can select a face and create another sketch. If 
I want to be able to interact with any of the edges of this face. I can use the edge tool, which will allow me to connect lines and so on to the existing geometry. With the sketch finished, I can perform an additive or a subtractive action on the body. For basically every additive action, there's an equal subtractive action. So for pad, there is pocket. Hole is an exception. That's something that you'll probably never use. So this is an additive revolve and a an subtractive revolve. Loft, negative loft, so on and so forth. A major difference between FreeCAD and Fusion 360 is that any action you perform on a body in the part design workbench can't result in the creation of multiple bodies. So for example, if we do a pocket on this sketch, we can't cut the object directly in two. The same goes with mirrors, patterns, anything else that will result in the creation of multiple parts within the one body, you just can't do it at this moment. The other tools are basically the same as what you would find in Fusion. So we have mirror, linear patterns, circular patterns, or polar patterns. There is a multi-pattern or multi-transform feature, which allows you to create a whole bunch of different types of patterns within the one operation. But that's for another video, as well as the basic things like fillet, chamfer, draft, and what is the equivalent of a shell in Fusion 360. Now, to create another body, all we need to do is to click the Create New Body button. The new body will appear active in the tree, and we can do exactly what we did with the previous body. Just create a sketch, make something solid from it. A major difference between FreeCAD and Fusion is that if I was to extrude this body through another body, they still remain separate. There's no ability to cut or add from another body in this way but the Boolean tool allows us to do that. So if I select the first body, click the Boolean tool, and I can add this body, decide that I want to do a cut, and there we go. There's our Boolean operation completed. Now that I've gone through the basics, I'll quickly go through a couple of things that will likely cause you trouble if you don't know about them. The main source of trouble I had when I first got started is that sketches have to be completely closed and cannot have any intersecting construction geometry. For example, if I create a sketch right now and create these two rectangles and try to pad them, first you'll notice that nothing's appearing on the screen. And then when I click OK, I'm going to get some errors. The errors vary depending on what kind of intersections you've got, but you can't do it. If we go back into the sketch, we can fix this by using the trim tool. Now the trim tool will cut a line up to the point that another line intersects it. So all we need to do is click on the lines and where they are intersected by another line, they'll disappear. We can now close this and the sketch works. The other problem is when sketches aren't fully closed. Fusion 360 will show you that a sketch or a section of a sketch is actually closed by filling the area. In FreeCAD, our construction geometry changes when it's fully constrained, but we don't get any indication that a sketch is fully closed. So either through doing a rough sketch and missing a connection, or by accidentally deleting some constraints, you might cause your sketch to become open. I'll just quickly delete this constraint and just open this sketch up just as an example. FreeCAD is much better at automatically fixing this than it used to be, but it's still something that can occur. If I close this sketch and then try to do something with it, we don't get anything appear on the screen. And when I try to complete the pad, I'll get an error message. To find the problem from the part design workbench, select the sketch, go to the sketch menu, click validate sketch, and then click the Highlight Open Vertexes button, and it will show us which points aren't connected. We can then close this, go back into the sketch and fix it. 
There's so much more I could have added to this video, but I wanted to keep it short and sweet and get you on your way straight away. I'll be doing a few more free CAD videos in the coming week, so let me know in the comments below what you want to see. Remember to like the video and subscribe so you know when the next one comes out. And remember, FreeCAD is free software developed by a dedicated group of volunteers in their spare time. If you're able to contribute either by editing the wiki or even helping out with the code, I've left links in the description below. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.